the start of the 20th century, there were 100,000 tigers in the world. In 2010, there are less than 3,000, with only about two-thirds of these capable of reproducing. Half of the surviving animals live in India. Of nine modern-era subspecies, three are already extinct, and two others are in immediate danger of extinction. The Sumatran tiger, the Siberian tiger, the Indochinese tiger, the Bengal tiger, and the Malay tiger. They're all different subspecies, each living in a different part of Asia. What they all have in common is they've been pushed to the very brink of extinction by man's fascination with their strength and beauty. No population of Indo-Chinese tigers, for example, exceeds 250, providing far less genetic diversity than optimal for effective interbreeding and population renewal. And the Indo-Chinese tiger isn't even the most endangered breed. Since the 19th century, the tiger's domain has radically shrunk, reduced from a zone that once covered Turkey and Russia to a scattering of isolated pockets sprinkled across 14 different countries. How did things go so wrong? The answer in a single word, hunting. There was a time when Queen Elizabeth, like many others, was an avid hunter of tigers, an animal rather conveniently labeled a man-eater. The animal's pelts were then proudly exhibited as trophies. In China, Mao Zedong designated the tiger an enemy of the people because it interfered with his urban and agricultural plans. Thus, the South Chinese tiger, considered by many the original tiger, the common ancestor to all others, was exterminated by peasants and the Red Guard. The species is now considered as extinct in the wild. And yet, in September 2006, a former hunter makes a most unexpected announcement, claiming to have proof there are still tigers in the forests of Jiangxi. He's the only person in 20 years claiming to have seen a South Chinese tiger. And he has photographed it. He deposits the images at the Ministry of Forests. Zhu Zhengong's photos show a tiger in robust health, gazing at the camera. The authorities declare the images authentic. Via internet, they soon circle the globe. A tiger long thought extinct reappears before the eyes of the world. Then, just as quickly, internet users begin questioning the photo's authenticity. What about the light that seems to be coming from the ground? The eye color seems artificial, and the vegetation, is it really the South Chinese tiger's domain, the Shanxi? For Yo Kuk Chu, Resident expert at Niang University in Singapore, there's little doubt. The tiger is sitting under some sort of uh, big leaves here that's mm -hmm. providing shade for the tiger. But for some reason, there is this very bright yeah. lighting underneath as though there's uh, some sort of lighting for this tiger. And this part is really dark here. I would be certain that this is a fake. Mm -hmm. Let's just take out this tiger here because uh, if I'm going to replace it with uh, a different animal. Mm -hmm. right? Just like the tiger. Right? Just like the tiger. The fraud is soon exposed. 
Initially celebrated as a hero, Zhou Zhenglong finally comes clean. He merely cut out a tiger's image from a poster, mounted it on cardboard, then placed the mounted cardboard on the ground in a grove. This explains, as this reconstruction shows, the incongruities of lighting and vegetation. and then gave his memory card to a studio for touch-ups that would initially fool the authorities, who were perhaps over-eager to believe in miracles. And so the dream ends as abruptly as a curtain coming down at the end of a play. The whole country feels let down, betrayed. The South Chinese tiger is indeed no more. The guilty fraudster is sentenced the authorities who initially authenticated the photos lose face. And so the South Chinese tiger again rejoins the Balinese tiger, topping the list of vanished breeds. Slightly smaller than other tigers, with a life expectancy of around 10 years and confined to a tiny territory on the island of Bali, the animal became extinct in the 1930s. No Balinese tiger has ever been filmed or captured alive. Martua Sinega and Augustina Suyanto, zoologists at Indonesia's Bogor Museum, have decided to mount the only display of a Balinese tiger in the world, feeling that in doing so, they might alert people to the fragility of all tiger populations. In these reserves is one of only five existing Balinese tiger pelts on the planet. They still must locate it among the tens of thousands of biological samples. Let's try this cupboard. Let's have a look. We should double check. Have a closer look. Yes, it's the right one. Okay. Let's check the drawing of its stripes. Look, the lines are narrow and branch out here. Somewhere between 1970 and 1980, the Javan tiger became extinct. The same fate awaited the Caspian tiger, also known as the Persian tiger, the most western subspecies. The South Chinese tiger didn't outlive them for long, except in captivity. Next on the list of tigers on track for extinction is the Sumatran, its future hanging by a thread. While once thriving on the islands of Java and Sumatra, the few surviving animals are now scattered on a few islets in Sumatra. Across the whole island, only around 400 Sumatran tigers remain, recognizable by their darker color, with thick, close-together stripes, which evolution has provided to better blend into the dark forests of their domain. Twenty-five Sumatran tigers still live at the Waikambas National Park, to the south of the island. Yunus, director of the Sumatran Tiger Conservation Trust, knows every one of them, because with his team of rangers, he's been observing and studying them for the past ten years. Primarily made up of humid forests and swamps, the park is transected by rivers that make the tiger's territory accessible.
For the past few days, however, Eunice and his team have lost all trace of one of the tigers from the reserve, an animal whose age makes him an ideal breeder. Is it tiger urine? No, it doesn't smell strong enough. Here, a tiger print. He made this with his hind paw. And we can see the claw marks here. He seems to be heading towards the river. Eunice's team has placed automatically triggered cameras throughout the tiger's territory. It's the only way to study such an elusive animal. The images show animals in fine health. The Sumatran tiger generally doesn't weigh more than 130 kilos, which allows him to move easily through the dense forests. All animals in the photos are indexed and recognized by their distinctive stripe patterns. Suddenly, the rangers come upon a plastic bag on the ground. Access to the tiger reserve is strictly forbidden to the general public. Only rangers and researchers are allowed. Yet an intrusion has clearly taken place. and his men won't just be catching a few poachers today. They'll be uncovering a whole trafficking ring. The trafficker's base is a nondescript house in a village not far from the park. The traffickers have been warned of the ranger's arrival, so the place is deserted. And yet inside they find many tiger pelts, teeth and bones. All are old. There's no trace of a recently killed tiger. Eunice is relieved. Kokumi, the tiger they've been searching for, may still be alive. What tiger parts have you recently sold? Mostly pelts, some bones and intestines. Who do you sell the merchandise to? I don't know anything. I'm just a middleman. Don't lie to me. I tell you, I don't know anything. I know you're trying to lie to me. Pursuing the inquiry will reveal that the group is linked to one exporting tiger parts to Thailand, as well as Burma and Laos, taking advantage of loosely guarded borders to reach the lucrative Chinese market. In this area, in the heart of the Golden Triangle, in public markets, one can find tiger skulls, paws, penises, and teeth, all smuggled in by Indian, Laotian, Burmese, or Indonesian traffickers. Thai butts are accepted, as well as dollars and euros. $200 for a canine tooth, $70 for a claw, $1,200 for a full pelt. Business is brisk and lucrative, despite the items in question all being banned. Ada? Ada beberapa. Yunus and his team don't know where to go. To their missing tiger, Ko Kun. His loss would be a terrible blow to the national park. The rangers hope that the automatic camera's memory cards might hold some sign of his whereabouts, some proof that he's still alive. The first images 
methods are always deceptive, since the motion-triggered yeah. devices don't distinguish between a tiger and a deer, a tiger and a macaque. Well. Yep. Finally, well, Kokun's image appears. The tiger they're searching for has indeed yeah, yeah, yeah. passed this way. But the images are several days old. He disappeared in the days after the photos were taken. Let down, the rangers decide to continue their search tomorrow. have excellent nocturnal vision. While men sleep, the tiger hunts, kills, eats. Its diet is a varied one, eating frogs or porcupines, or bringing down deer or young buffalo. The night visitor had no intention, like all tigers when not threatened, of attacking the campsite. Hey, look! I found a paw print. Yeah, it's definitely a print. Pas sepatu saya kemarin ini, sepatu jelas. Cuman berarti yang semalam pas sepatu saya kemarin ini. Unfortunately, the prints don't offer sufficient identification proof. Yunus's team nonetheless decides to follow the tiger's trail. It might well be the one they're searching for. Agak kering sekarang. Agak keras ini. Enggak enggak. Oh ini 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 dia. Ini mas mas. And there's another one, right here. The trail is lost in the river. Of all tigers, the Sumatran are the best swimmers. They can cross water several hundred meters wide and, with the current, have been known to swim up to 30 kilometers. At the Bulgar Museum, under Matua Sanaga's supervision, a team of taxidermists are trying to summon up the past. They're going to recreate a tiger that no one has ever seen. It's a modeling challenge. The first step is to create a core skeleton of steel and wood. It is their intention to remind viewers that all life is fleeting, even to the point of disappearing from people's memories disappearances, which in future must be avoided at all cost. As they resume their quest, Yunus and his rangers come upon some tiger excrement. They carefully gather up a sample because its contents may hold information on ways of bolstering the species' durability. If some of the Sumatran tigers have prospered at the Wei Kambas National Park, it's because it has many of their favorite prey, including deer and wild boar. The tiger is a relentless hunter. The stripes break its silhouette, blending it in with the branches and underbrush. This allows the predator to draw close to its prey without being seen. Its retractable claws are as sharp as razors and can slice through its victim's tendons and arteries. Ah, 
In the tiger excrement samples he's gathered, Yunus has found bone fragments of rodents and frogs, but nothing indicating the animal had eaten larger prey. From an observation tower at the center of the tiger's hunting grounds, he checks out the numbers of deer and wild boar necessary for the predator's survival. Berarti di sini itu restorannya harimau ya? Iya. Berapa itu? Empat. A few deer are still there, but most have vanished. Where have they gone? This mystery only compounds that of Kokun's disappearance. Maybe the two are in some way linked. Awas, pelan 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 pelan. Since no Balinese tiger skull exists, the taxidermist working at Bogor opt to use a Sumatran tiger's as a basic point of reference to reconstruct the whole body. They will lessen the hole by 10 to 20 percent, since the Balinese tiger was smaller than the Sumatran one. To the taxidermist's eyes, the technique being used is too random. They're unsure. Matua Sinaga and her team never cease coming back to the Sumatran tiger's skeleton to double-check their calculations and equations. Finally, the proportions of the infrastructure satisfy Martua. Some areas still need to be filled in with straw and sawdust to create the shape from which the detailed work will begin. Why is Cocoon still unfindable? Is he still within the park's grounds, where he can at least be somewhat protected? Or has he wandered to the dangerous fringe areas, where hunters and traffickers are an ever-present danger? fears the worst. With the arrival of the internet, black market traffickers have become ever harder to catch. Sales have become virtual. It's as easy to find tiger parts on the net as it is to buy toys or bottles of vitamins. Tonight, the head of the Sumatran Tiger Conservation Trust passes himself off as a buyer to try and identify the seller. Hello. Yes, hello. I'm interested. Are the products genuine? My clients are interested. But are your products still for sale or are they just there for show? No, they're for sale. And how much do you want for them? The price is 25 million rupees. Some are selling them for 21 million, but the quality isn't the same. I have a certificate from the Department of Forests. You really have a certificate, right? And what's your name? Sofian Mustar. Okay. For thousands of years, Asians have dreamt of assimilating the tiger's strength, of absorbing its courageous essence by way of shamans, brews, or inhaling incense fumes. Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism 
have never managed to fully eradicate the belief that to absorb the tiger is to become the tiger. Better still, through a ritual tattooing overseen by monks, some actually transform their bodies into veritable tiger's lairs. Tigers are in their heart, their muscles, and their skin, protecting them right up until death. Despite the authorities' ongoing efforts, some patients still deeply believe in the benefits of traditional Chinese folk medicine. I need uh, tiger bone pill. The tiger is a protected species. Tiger bone powder has been illegal since 1994. I will give you buffalo bone powder. It works just as well. Yes, but I want tiger bone powder. In China, many tiger products are seen as capable of curing pretty much everything. Hypertension, asthma, digestive troubles, to clear up infections, help lower cholesterol levels, or, of course, to boost virility. Beliefs that have been around for thousands of years aren't always easy to banish overnight. According to traditional Chinese folk medicine, to treat arthritis and rheumatism, nothing is as effective as tiger wine. The drink is prepared by marinating a tiger carcass for two or three years in rice wine. The price varies from $120 to $250 a bottle. According to the authorities, products sold in Chinese pharmacies do not actually contain any trace of tiger. To verify this, these samples were sent to the Strathclyde Laboratory in Scotland for DNA testing. The tests will be performed on the canine teeth, the claws, and a small quantity of tiger wine. At Bogor, the silhouette of the Balinese tiger is starting to take shape. It still remains just a plaster ghost, but it will soon emerge as a full stand-in for the once proud predator that moved through the jungles of its island before the finality of extinction struck in the 1930s. Yunus and his men are still searching for Ko Kun, even within the confines of the national park, the animal isn't without risk. Still fresh leaves hide a deadly trap that poachers have recently laid. Tigers are often caught in traps like these, and it isn't uncommon for them to practically rip off their leg in their efforts to free themselves. Sometimes the limb must then be amputated. 
These tigers can no longer be released to live in the wild. They must be given asylum. This one is transferred after being given an anesthetic to a specialized center, Taman Safari on the island of Java. These operations are given considerable media coverage in the hopes of further reminding the public of the fragile status of this iconic species. The wounded tiger, awake but heavily sedated, will travel over 1,600 kilometers by plane. Taman Safari is located not far from Bandung, near Jakarta. The voyage draws to a close for the stressed and wounded animal. Taman Safari, the new arrival, will take several days to calm down under the watchful supervision of a team of specialists headed by Arsiad Jamaluddin. Thirty-six Sumatran tigers and twenty Bengal tigers are cared for at Taman. All have been transferred here in the aftermath of injuries or amputations, or they were born in captivity. The animals are well fed, five chickens daily, and kangaroo for special occasions. Taman is also a reproduction and training center. When animals are threatened with extinction in the wild, as is the case with the tiger, individuals in captivity often become the only hope of perpetuating the species. Twelve tigers, six males and six females, chosen among the most robust and with the strongest genetic capital, have been selected as reproducers. To obtain the sperm necessary for artificial insemination, a male must first be immobilized. He can then be anesthetized without fear that he'll take off an arm. The anesthetics don't take long to take effect. The sperm must be pure and untainted by any contaminants. Hair at the base of the penis is cleared away.
The animal is stimulated by internal means. The quantity of sperm produced is limited. In nature, coupling between the large cats lasts only a few seconds. Now the quality and viability of the sample obtained must be assessed. Throughout all this, the tiger is kept asleep. Once the quality of the sperm has been ascertained, the animal can be awoken. The waking up is slow and gradual. The sperm is transferred and readied for freezing. about the health of the animals in captivity, which may well represent the future of the species. This young one, Yuda, must be coaxed into being helped for a minor eye infection. If they have the strength to live and to grow, the babies born at Taman could become the center's next reproducers. As such, they're particularly well taken care of.
Raising tigers to ensure the survival of the species can also yield interesting side benefits. Here, tourists have come to watch a tigress feeding a bunch of piglets, as fine a testament as one might find of harmony between species. In reality, here, it's far more usual for sows to provide maternal milk for baby tigers. So, why the whole elaborate orchestration? The center where these images were filmed presents 25 adult tigers to the public. But behind the scenes, there are actually over 300 of them in the enclosures of a private area. The reproduction rate is high. So, why breed and raise all of these animals only to present a handful of them to the public? Exiting the zoological park, visitors come upon this homage to a tigress that was able to carry and deliver three litters of five babies per year. Taking the babies away from their mothers readies the tigress to be impregnated again. So, what becomes of the surplus of animals? Is it really that difficult to imagine? Especially when DNA analysis of these claws shows they're from a tiger. Certain centers, particularly in China, raise tigers for the express purpose of feeding the illicit black market in traditional Chinese folk medicine. The situation will remain unchanged as long as those consuming tiger-linked products close their eyes to the link between the tooth they're buying and a species on the brink of extinction. For the taxidermists at Bogo, it's the moment of truth, the moment to oil down the plaster and ready the precious rare pelt from the Balinese tiger. The pelt has spent over 80 years in a cupboard. On account of its fragility, it must first be rehydrated in a special solution. of this pelt, one of only a few in the world, is inestimable. The slightest wrong move could damage it. Fastening it to the plaster structure is a delicate step. The mystery of the disappearance of the Sumatran tiger's prey in the Wei Kambas region remains unsolved, and Eunice continues searching for his missing tiger, Ko Kun. The explanation may lie in these palm oil plantations and in the trucks coming and going okay. around them. Hello, we've come to inquire about a tiger. The oil palm's fruit and other agricultural products of the surrounding villages draw a plentiful supply of the herbivores that tigers feed on. That and the ever-present risk of poachers within the park have pushed the tigers closer to areas occupied by man. Like all predators, tigers follow their prey, which could explain Cocoon's departure. One of the men, CF, confirms having been startled by a tiger on the previous night. As night falls, Siep tells his story to Eunice's men. He remembers being jolted awake, the presence of a tiger close by, the uneasy bleating of his goats, the agonized cry of one of them, pounced upon by the monster. Drawing closer to the sheepfold, he then saw the tiger devouring its prey, 
The man stood there frozen, petrified. For what seemed like two hours, we locked gazes, him and me. Soon, Siep's elation throws Eunice's man off. He now realizes that Siep believes tigers are his ancestors and won't contribute to the death of his predator cousin. To rid him of his anguish, a shaman has been called in. The ceremony is out to calm Siep's soul and to prevent his cousin, Tiger, from returning to torment him. As far as Eunice and his team are concerned, they'd rather the very opposite, and would love to see Cocoon back safe and sound, ready to return to the jungle. It's likely that Cocoon has left the national park. Maybe, frightened by CF and the men from the village, he headed off down one of the migration corridors that many non-governmental organizations set up between protected zones, which are among the species' few hopes. Maybe Cocoon has simply moved on from one national park to another. Sumatran tiger had the misfortune to cross paths with hunters, poachers, or traffickers, and has now joined his Balinese cousins among those who have gone never to return. Yeah. Hati -hati. Hati -hati. Hati -hati. Awas, Ini, uh, spesimen At Bogor, the museum taxidermist's meticulous Lengka. job yeah. is yeah. nearing Lengka. completion. Lengka. Lengka. Uh. Hati -hati. From the shadows of time re-emerges the most forgotten tiger of all, the one never even so much as captured on film. His likeness will hopefully remind those visiting the institution that all species are mortal, that they live, share our planet, then disappear if we aren't caring and careful. <laughs> Straight. Straight. That's it. Keep it straight. The Balinese tiger rejoins his Sumatran cousins. His disappearance may be a precursor to their tragic destiny. You've got to turn it a, a little towards the left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. The list of species still alive grows constantly shorter. The rate of extinction has not been this high in 65 million years. Ironically, if the Sumatran tiger is to survive, he must escape man's fascination with him. A fascination which has brought about the creature's destruction. Until then, 
400 Sumatran tigers, oblivious to their precarious destiny, move through the waters of the darkest jungles. Thank you.